I'm happy to welcome back Brian Reynolds from the Butterflies of the World Foundation. And today's topic is a challenging one. Yes, it is. We're going to look at uh, identifying butterflies. And, you know, from my entomology background, I know that it's not straightforward at all. So we're going to speak in generalities yes, today. Yes, there's always exceptions mm -hmm. to what we're talking about. Absolutely. Now, typically, butterflies kind of fall out into big groups. Uh, based on some of their morphology. Yes, what you want to look at, and keep this as one step, is to look at the size, the color, and the shape of the wings. And all together at once. At Gonna once. Going to get that big picture. Yes, so as an example, if you have a large yellow butterfly, mm -hmm. and you look at the wing shape and it has tails on it, then right away that puts it in the category of being a swallowtail. Right. But if you have another one that's large and yellow, doesn't have a lot of marking, and it has smooth wings, mm -hmm. then you can put that into the category of like maybe a clouded sulfur. Okay. So it kind of gives you an idea of where to start at least with your, with your further identification. Right. Now a lot of our larger species kind of fall into three groups. And then we can look at the wing shape to break those apart. Yes. Right. Some mm -hmm. of the larger species would be like the swallowtails we just mm -hmm. mentioned. They have that very characteristic That's very tail. obvious. Mm -hmm. And then also the fritillaries mm -hmm. and the long wings, which are more elongated mm -hmm. uh, wing shapes. And then also we have the... Uh, the angled, yes. kind of, that typical butterfly shape that we think of. Right, again, yeah. and it's kind of a generalization, but right. uh, larger would be like the morning cloaks and the question marks that are more angled winged. Now with our smaller species, a lot of those seem to fall out by color. Pretty much, mm -hmm. you have the more of the silvery, bluish, tiny little ones, which would be the, the hair streaks and blues. Mm -hmm. Then you have more of the tan and brownish looking ones would be some of the, the, the main grass skippers. Right. And then also the, the bright yellow ones that mm -hmm. are little would be the sulfurs. And the whites kind of Included in there, there as too. well. Yep. Okay. Now, again, these are real generalized, um, but another way, that'll get us to a kind of a group Yes. And then another way we can start to sort through that is our location. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And as an example, we have an excellent field guide here that I highly recommend. And every species has a range map. Right. So if you see a yellow butterfly and you're trying to figure out what it is, and you look at the range map and it's only found up in Canada, then obviously it's not that species. Right. So it's a quick way to eliminate a lot yeah. of the species. Yeah, that's, that's a good word. It's the, identifying butterflies is kind of a process of elimination. It is. It's challenging and some people love that, some people hate it and just want to enjoy the beauty and that's good enough. Yeah. So what are some of the resources? Obviously, I think a must-have would be a good field guide. Yes, mm -hmm. and this is a, a great one. Mm -hmm. Another resource you can use, obviously, is the internet. Mm -hmm. And there's several websites that specialize in helping identify butterflies yeah. that are interactive. And you click in the size and the shape and the color, and it kind of narrows it down for you. Mm -hmm. And other thing is some of the tools that you use when you're uh, trying to identify the butterflies. Mm -hmm. uh, various binoculars and you want to try and get one that is close focusing. Okay. And then also the, the cameras, uh, you don't need a big fancy one like mine. Mm -hmm. Point and shoot works fine. Mm -hmm. So you can be out in the wild or in your garden, photograph the butterfly, enjoy it, watch it, and then later on, take your time on your computer and try and identify what you saw. Yeah, and there's some resources where you could submit photos. Yes. Uh, and another thing, you know, if we visit your website, there's pictures of all the butterflies in Oklahoma. You, you can, can try to compare, compare those. And match. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, I know it's a challenging topic, and we must remember that you know there's so many exceptions. We're just talking in generalities, but the more you do it, the more experience you're going to get, the more confident you're going to feel, and the easier it'll become. Well, I appreciate this little tutorial. Thank you. Thank you.